It is the Group B Finals for Season 12 on The Masked Singer. It is also 60s night, so let's get to it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my recap and reaction video for Season 12 Group B Finals of The Masked Singer. We have uh, at least one unmasking on this episode. There could be two, but the judges do have the option for the Ding Dong Keep It On Bell. They can only use it once per season. They did not choose to use it for Group A. We haven't met Group C yet, so who knows uh, what great singers may be a part of that, but I have the feeling, I don't know, this is a beloved group. I have the feeling that um, we may only get the one unmasking and the other two move ahead to the finals, but we will see, or the uh, the quarterfinals. But we have uh, Goo, Bluebell, and Wasp uh, competing in tonight's episode, and at least one of them will be going home. Before we get to the specifics of this episode, uh, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are one of my subscribers already, thank you so much. Uh, if you're not, please consider subscribing and click that like button down below. Uh, if you only come to the channel for my Masked Singer content, well, that is all fine and good. Love having you watch these videos. But I do a lot of other stuff on the channel uh, that might be fun for you to check out as well. A lot of movie and TV reviews. Uh, uh, other than the Masked Singer stuff, I do try to post something new just about every day, so there's always a lot going on. Uh, but you could like this video or comment below. That stuff helps the channel out, too. And uh, with the Masked Singer videos, the comments help me out as well, um, because sometimes I am not on the right path for who may be under the mask, and uh, I believe that uh, a lot of times the comments get me to uh, where I need to be uh, with that. So, we will uh, talk about all of that. Uh, we start with the group singing the uh, fun, fun, fun from the Beach Boys. Uh, all three remaining contestants, the Goo, the Bluebell, and the Wasp, are singing that together uh, and just having a blast with that. Um, and then we get to the uh, the first performer, who is the Goo. He said, I just now started believing in myself. Uh, I once had a major goal and... Uh, saved up just enough to survive for one year to make it happen. I was living on borrowed slime, as he is the goo. Um, he says, he, with a dollar and a dream, he just didn't coast. He worked harder than anyone. And we see a chessboard at that point. Now, of course, we just lost uh, the chess piece last week. That was Laverne Cox, or two weeks ago, I guess. Last week, the World Series was on. Um, but the specific piece I, I wrote down on this chessboard was a rook. So I'm thinking maybe we're we, you know we're thinking this is a sports star. So I'm thinking maybe something big with his rookie year uh, on that one. But he said uh, that's when I got a call that changed everything. And we see um, a bunch of like gold spilling out of a bag of some sort. I wrote down pirate booty, but uh, they kept saying gold uh, on the panel. So I, I guess gold is a part of it as well. Um, what else? Uh, he says this past year's been a total rush. And I'm still uh, on the rise to greatness. I would, uh, it would melt my heart to make it to the quarterfinals. So when he says this past year has been a total rush, are we thinking of a rusher in the NFL? Maybe, um, could be. And uh, let's see. So uh, after the song, which was uh, "House of the Rising Sun," he started out, you know, very. Uh, I mean, that's that's a somber song, but it starts out, um, you know, and he was using his lower register, and then as the song ramped up, uh, you know, kind of gave us some some great notes uh, towards the end there. And then um, for the post song clue, everybody is uh, going to get a '60s invention clue, and uh, that that's going to, um, you know, somehow relate to them. And so for him, it was Jell-O, which I have to point out, uh, Jell-O was invented way before the 60s. Uh, and I already knew that because it was the sponsor, and this is uh, such such nerdy crap, but um, Lucille Ball, before I Love Lucy, did a radio show called My Favorite Husband in the 40s and the early 50s, and it was sponsored by Jell-O. Um, so I knew it was, so I had to look it up. I'm like, okay, it was at least around in the forties. Jell-O was invented in 1897. So why they're pretending Jell-O was invented in the sixties, I couldn't tell you. Another uh, batch of nonsense from the mass Singer producers. Um, but this had a whistle inside, um, you know, maybe the idea of sixties Jell-O molds, uh, with like things in it started in the sixties. I guess, I suppose that's a possibility, but, uh, even that I think dates back 
to the, the 40s and 50s, really. But anyway, um, then he says, Oh, say, he, or he started kind of singing it. Oh, say, can you see? Uh, which is, of course, the national anthem. He said, that has meaning for me in more than one way. Um, and then we have the guesses from the panel include Anthony Hamilton, Brian McKnight. Brian McKnight is guest just about every season. Eventually, he probably will do the show. He did The Masked Dancer, um, which was a, a one-season, one-off a few summers ago, um, but hasn't been on this show yet. And then Leon Bridges was another guest from the panel. Look, um, I really did not know this one at all. Here's an example of one that you guys really helped me with in the comments because I had no clue. But I, I was pretty sure this was some kind of football player because his ambassador was Keenan Allen, who is, uh, I think he's still a current football player. Um, but Kobe Turner was the name that you guys kept mentioning in the comments. I had never heard of this person. But look, uh, you know, all of the clues always check out uh, with this guy. I, I admit I kind of forgotten, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks, more specific things about Kobe Turner. Is he a rusher? I don't know. But certainly it says, you know, this past year has been a total rush. Um, you know, the the rook on the chessboard, rookie uh, of the year, that kind of thing. I think that tracks. So I will keep my guess as Kobe Turner for now for the goo. All right, up next, we get to Bluebell, and uh, she is the one that is going home first. She will not be part of the Battle Royale. So we'll go over the clues and then um, go over her unmasking, and then we'll get to the Wasp. Uh, but the Bluebell says... I love dancing and singing and expressing my creativity. There was a time when I had not a drop in the bucket of inspiration. I was at the top of my field at one point, but when that went away, I was left wondering, does anyone still love me? And we see white lilies in a vase at that point. She said, it felt like I couldn't put two words together to save my life uh, and had writer's block for years. And she is seen tearing a carnival ticket um, and Jenny says, you know, in a little pop-up window, oh, Natalie Merchant, Carnival, sure. Um, and then, uh, we see a bowl of sugar. She said, it all changed when I became a mom and inspiration came flooding back. And the song she did was Do You Love Me by The Contours. Uh, of course, it was a hit in the 60s, but, uh, it was also a hit in the 80s as the Dirty Dancing soundtrack came out. That was a huge hit comeback album with a lot of older and newer songs on there and do you love me by the contours was one of those so uh you know a couple generations really know that one her 60s clue was an easy bake oven and that did come out in the 60s i believe it was 63 um and inside was a vegemite sandwich which she says is a delicacy where i'm born so that is australia and uh, they made nick try he said it was terrible i only really know vegemite because they reference it in the Men at Work song, Down Under. Um, Robin was going on and on about how nobody knows that Vegemite is from Australia. I think that's pretty common, if not because of that song, Down Under. I just, you know, people just know that. Um, so everyone was kind of giving them crap about that. But um, the guesses from the panel then were um, the ones that they guessed at the end of the show. So let's just skip right to uh, their end of show guesses. Jenny was thinking it could be Naomi Watts, who is an Australian, and we saw a script in an earlier clue package, so someone who is an actress. Um, Robin thought it might be Isla Fisher, who, um, I, is she Australian or is she British? Maybe she's maybe she is Australian. Um, it's not a terrible guess, I, I suppose. Uh, we know she can sing. Rose Byrne was Ken's guess. We certainly know she can sing. She did uh, the live version of Annie, or no, not the live version, the uh, the second movie version of Annie um, just a few years ago. Um, and he pointed out that um, she was in the movie Neighbors with Seth Rogen, true. Uh, but Rita's guess was also on the soap opera Neighbors, and they're, they're saying these Neighbors clues because of the sugar. And, you know, what do you borrow from your neighbors? A cup of sugar. Um, but she thought it might be Kylie Minogue, who, yes, absolutely did get her start on Neighbors. I sort of posed that as a question a couple of weeks ago because I wasn't positive. But my guess definitely started on Neighbors, the soap opera, uh, and had a huge hit uh, single with the song Torn, which explains the tearing of the carnival ticket. Uh, she also had an album called White Lily's Island. 
So we saw those white lilies in a vase earlier tonight. Um, and look, I was not thinking this originally. This was not my first impression guess. You guys uh, in the comments put me on this one. I must admit, I thought it was more in the uh, the Taylor Momsen type of uh, collective from those first clues. But I think this is Natalie and Brulia. Uh, and I also didn't realize until you guys said it in the comments, I mentioned this uh, the other week, that she also was part of another Mass Singer version, the Mass Singer Australia, uh, where, you know, she's obviously got more hits there. Um, but her, her big song is Torn. This is the second clue package where we've seen something being torn. I forget what it was uh, last week. Was it like a, a, a diary entry or something? Some kind of piece of... Oh, a Polaroid. That's right. A, a ripped Polaroid. Um, so look, uh, but without further ado, I think this is Natalie and Brilliant. And it's funny because Jenny actually said that last week. And this week is going with Naomi Watts. I don't know why she wasn't still thinking about uh, um, Natalie and Brulia because I I'm pretty sure that's who this is. I, I think you guys were on to it, so I thank you for the help there because I don't know. Certainly that first week, I, I was not thinking of her at all, but I definitely uh, got on board pretty quickly. I think this is Natalie and Brulia. Let's take a look. All right. I think it must be. She's got those doe eyes. Yep, that's her. I wonder what Jenny, uh, Jenny's jaw dropped. Yeah, because she said it last week. And was Rita on the panel in the Massacre Australia when she was on? Okay. Yeah, she's like calling Rita out. The Right, the Polaroid that was torn. The carnival ticket that was torn. Come on, guys. Get it together. Why did you choose to do this? Well, it's just so much fun to get for me to do the dance choreography and everything. Things that I don't do actually in my music career. Right. But I'm actually a stage school kid, so I grew up. Yeah. Doing oh, that. she grew up doing theater and, and so stuff. Well, that makes sense because she was on that soap opera neighbors. Yeah. Oh so I've been doing. He said, "Are you Australian?" Accent, yes. I've been in American accent the whole time. I, yeah, she's been talking yeah. in one, in an American but, accent. Yeah, it wasn't the best. But it threw people off enough. You did a great job disguising your voice. All right, that's cool. I've been waiting for you to come on our show forever. I have to say something, too, about Natalie and Brulia. Okay. Now, she is a a one-hit wonder in, in the U.S., right, with their song Torn. Uh, you know, huge hit. But, first of all, that's not even her song. That was a cover song uh, from this band, Ed the Swap, from a few years earlier. I don't know if they're Australian or not. But, uh, in any event, that whole album, uh, it was called Left of the Middle, uh, it had a couple of, like, minor follow-ups. It didn't do very well. Wishing I Was There, Smoke. Um, MTV played the videos, though. And uh, that whole album, though, is really, really good. If you get, uh, you know, an hour or whatever this week, check out Left of the Middle from Natalie and Brulia. It is a really, really solid album. Uh, and I do love that song, Torn. You know, that's it's one I'm still not even sick of. Uh, but, but the rest of the album is really good. So anyway, uh, all right, well, I will uh, watch here the rest of the episode. We have the Battle Royale coming up between the Goo and the Wasp. We haven't even gotten to the Wasp clues yet. My guess as of now, and of course I made this guess in the Group A Finals too, my guess is they are going to use the Ding Dong Keep It On Bell and both Goo and Wasp will move forward. The Wasp, before I even get to the clues, oh my God, what a performance. There's no way the Wasp is going home. I, I can say that. But I think if the Goo is the one about to be unmasked, I think they're going to save him. So uh, let's, let's check that out and uh, we'll see here. All right, it's really no surprise that they used the Ding Dong Keep It On bell. Uh, and boy, they, they drew it out for, for like a minute. It's them talking about, should we use the bell? Should we save them? And then Jenny like slowly goes up to the bell. Uh, this show could easily be probably 25 minutes, uh, if I'm being honest. But anyway, so Goo is not going home. Uh, he is moving forward. But I will uh, give you the final guesses for tonight from the panel. Um, Rita said Anthony Hamilton. That's basically all the people they said earlier in the episode. Ken uh, said Brian McKnight. Uh, Jenny said someone she had mentioned uh, in last time's episode, Johnny Gill. And then Robin uh, said his guest from earlier, Leon Bridges. But we will have to wait a few more weeks to uh, meet with the goo again. First up, though, or not first up, but last up tonight was the Wasp. And uh, I knew that the Wasp was going to move forward. So not only did he do a great song the first time around, but in the Battle Royale, uh, Goo and Wasp both sang I Heard It Through the Grapevine, one of the classic 60s Motown tunes. And, I mean, Wasp is just in a different league 
than the goo. The goo is good, uh, but boy, oh boy, I, I, I cannot see the wasps from the people we have in Group A and Group B so far. Well, uh, boys to men, if uh, or whoever the the buffalo are, I think it's boys to men. Um, certainly, will will provide whew, some competition. But uh, I don't know. Wasp is just outstanding. But anyway, so they did. I heard it through the grapevine for the battle royale. The goo was going to go home, and Jenny uh, saved him. The panel all agreed, really, uh, to save him. It, I wish though we could have at least gotten to know all of the contestants before they did the finals, because I would have liked for the panel to at least have heard Group C before they decided, okay, this is the person we want to for sure save. It seems a little bit weird, but okay. Uh, so the Wasp says, I feel uh, like a superhero, but in my life, my hero has been my mom. She has always been so creative. Halloween was her favorite. We see a stethoscope at that point, and as well, he's looking at a treasure map. But as I got older, I saw cracks in her armor as she faced her darkest battle, and no amount of love or money could save her. I thought I'd never recover when she passed, but she would be so proud of me now. And then he sang Ain't No Way by Aretha Franklin, and I actually thought, well, that's an interesting choice, because these other two sang very, very famous songs. House of the Rising Sun, I think, was a number one hit. Do You Love Me, like I said, you know, it was a hit once, and then it was a hit again when Dirty Dancing came out. Ain't No Way is not one of, like, the top five or, you know, probably even ten Aretha Franklin songs. So it's an interesting choice, uh, but I think one that paid off in spades because he just killed it. I mean, if you are not familiar with the song, it's probably even better because then you're not even comparing it to Aretha. But even if you know the song, I mean, it was such an incredible version. Uh, so he did great with that. I knew after that performance he was not going home in any way, shape, or form, whether it was the Ding Dong Keep It On Bell or whatever, but I didn't think anybody was even going to vote for him to go home. Um, so his 60s clue was an ATM, and they did, uh, they were invented in the 60s. So a uh, million dollars came out with uh, Robin's face. They did up like a cutesy million dollar fake bill. And he said, just like this bill, I'm, I've am i also hit a million. So we're thinking million selling maybe album. Certainly this man that I think it is has sold a million copies of his single uh, you know, through the, through the streaming charts or whatever. But, uh, the guesses from the panel, uh, some that we've heard before and some that are new. Mario, uh, it, this is the first time anyone has mentioned Mario this season, uh, on the panel, and Rita said it. And I can't believe, I keep saying this, Jenny says Mario every single season. And if she doesn't, Robin says it. Why are these people letting Rita steal their thunder? Because I believe that it is Mario. I've, I've been saying that since week one. The voice is fairly unmistakable, but as we get more clues, it's just every week it becomes more obvious that it's Mario. The other uh, guesses from the panel, um, and Mario has toured with Robin Thicke, but Robin said, uh, could be, but there's only a few people that, you know, can hit those notes. One of them is Craig David, uh, who's, you know, from England, from across the pond, a great R&B and soul singer. Um, he had hits, you know, right around the same time as Mario, the early 2000s. Um, he had a song called Seven Days, and Fill Me In was another one. Um, you know, he, he definitely can sing. I don't think it's him from the clues, but uh, it's not a terrible guess. And then Eric Benet was guest, who uh, used to be married to Holly Berry, um, and, you know, was a singer in his own right. And then Jason Derulo. I believe Jason Derulo has been said before, uh, for the Wasp, or at least this season from somebody. Yes, okay, so the first week the Wasp sang, Jason Derulo's name came up. Okay, um, so look, those are all fine guesses, but Mario, Rita has it right. It is Mario. Um, I'm very confident in this. Every week we get more and more clues uh, that, that are filling in some of the gaps. I don't know what some of the clues tonight were. The stethoscope, I'm not sure. Um, oh, you know what? I just thought of it. Some, you know, sometimes I just think of these off the cuff. There was a famous video game called Dr. Mario. Do we remember this? It was part of the Mario line. Um, it had to be. I mean, it was on the original Nintendo, so it had to be 89 or 90, maybe. Uh, so shortly after, like, Super Mario Brothers 2 or 3 came out, um, they had Dr. Mario. So that could be the stethoscope clue. But anyway, um, last week... I was sort of going back and forth on Mario because he ke he keeps talking about this big family that he comes from. And I didn't know much about his family uh, in terms of how many 
were in it, but I did know that his mother had a big drug problem and ended up dying uh, from that. And so him talking about that this week, you know, he didn't never said, you know, she died from drugs or anything, but he said, you know, she fought her toughest battle and no amount of love or money, you know, could save her, you know, and she passed. So, you know, that sort of fills in any doubt, uh, I think, that anybody would have that this is definitely Mario. So, I, I, and I honestly, I think Wasp could win the whole thing. Where are you guys at with uh, who is left in this competition? Buffalo is the only uh, people from Group A moving forward, and now we have the Goo and the Wasp. Of these three, we haven't met Group C yet. There'll be one more from Group C, but uh, of those three acts, who is your favorite? Who do you think is going to win? Unfortunately, I don't think it's Goo. I think he's got a lot of talent, uh, especially for a a non-singer professionally, an athlete. Um, but I think uh, Wasp is just so incredible. He's going to be tough to beat for sure. All right. Well, anyway, thank you uh, for watching. That is this week's episode. Next week, we will have uh, another one and I will see you then. But check out my other videos in the meantime and, and uh, think about subscribing as well if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.